and slow. You're watching KREX 5 News at 10 p.m. Good evening and thanks for watching KREX 5 News at 10. I'm John Madden. An effort to reduce the wild horse population in Grand Junction has reached its final steps using a more forceful and effective method. KREX 5 News reporter Camila Barco headed out to Cameo this morning to get a closer look at this process. Something I've never seen before and had an opportunity to see it. Anna Elliott, a member of Friends of the Mustangs group, joined the Bureau of Land Management to make sure wild horses found a home. That's our goal. No horse left behind. <laughs> it's the final steps in trapping the remaining 33 horses using a helicopter leading the Mustangs to a trap. So this is an efficient and humane method we use to uh, get the horses. Um, this range has been gathered before. The Little Book Cliffs Wild Horse Range has seen a herd of 190 this year, an amount that exceeds the capacity by 40. So a certain number of horses that's appropriate for the forage that's out there and for the other years to consider. In an effort to remove the overpopulation of wild horses that will improve conditions for not only the horses but the wildlife. The attempt started back in early September, luring them in with a time-consuming method. We put hay, weed-free hay and water out, and the horses um, went to that location. 27 horses were successfully removed from the range, but the BLM has a goal to remove a total of 60 Mustangs. The other horses um, that we're trying to remove now just didn't go to the bait traps. They were in remote, inaccessible locations. However, not every horse trapped will be getting adopted. The BLM will work um, to identify which horses um, are good to remove and which ones should stay on the range. While they are helping to combat the overpopulated area, wild horse advocates believe the helicopter method is harmful. The helicopter will not force the horses to go full speed for hours on end. Um, it is um, basically horses at, at a pace that they choose. The fact that they were in and no one was hurt, beautiful. Those chosen will be given food and water, checked out by a vet, vaccinated, and be available for adoption. First on the Western Slope, Camila Barco, CARIAX, 5 News. Ten horses were rounded up today with the helicopter method, which will continue for another seven to ten days. The group Friends of the Mustangs say they will have a meet and greet with the horses on November 2nd, followed by an adoption day on November 3rd at Rimrock Ventures. The Mace County Crime Stopper is asking for your help in finding suspects who stole items that are used to help with Special Olympics. The theft occurred in the 300 block of Murr Street, where the victim reported his black sports bag and blue sports bag had been taken from the bed of his truck. The bags held baseball and softball equipment that was valued at more than $700, which helped with the Special Olympics. If you know the identity or whereabouts of those involved, you're encouraged to contact Mesa County Crime Stoppers at 970-241-7867. Information leading to an arrest can earn you a cash reward. Marillac Health is still on a mission to improve their prenatal care. The clinic is aiming to raise $30,000 by October 18th to purchase their first ultrasound machine. It's part of their 30-year anniversary as a clinic. They've helped bring in 80 to 100 babies into the world each year since 2015. They say this instrument is crucial during a woman's pregnancy. Rocky Mountain Health Plan has donated $10,000 and will match your contribution. If you'd like to be part of the mission, you can head to our web channel, westernslopenow.com, to donate. The Rocky Mountain Hospital for Children at Swedish a special Halloween preemie reunion. The Lee family were excited to return and say thank you to the doctors and nurses who took care of their baby. Joel Hillian has a story. My husband and I were in a fight for his life. Looking at 16-month-old Andrew now in his doggy Halloween costume, you would never know that his life had such an inauspicious start. I was 26 weeks pregnant. Uh, about to enter my third trimester, and uh, I learned that I had severe preeclampsia. Linda Lee would be immediately hospitalized. Doctors and nurses at Swedish Medical Center did everything they could to keep Linda from having to deliver Andrew. So I just kept saying, he's not ready, his brain isn't ready. I don't care what it takes, you know, I, I will suffer through this. He just needs to stay inside. Four days after being admitted to the hospital, Andrew would be delivered to save Linda's life. Then the fight was on to save Andrew, a micro preemie born at just one pound, 12 ounces. After he was born, the doctor came to visit us and she cried with us because she was so scared. I've never experienced stress like that in my life. The nurses were there every step of the way, not only helping Andrew rally to full health, 
but supporting the family as well. They cried with us, they held our hands, they took care of us. And now mom and dad can look forward to a bright future for their little Andrew. He's just got so much personality and, and we, we just love him so much. I want him to be a good person and I want him to be happy. I just want him to know that he's loved and be strong enough to deal with whatever life throws his way. In Inglewood, Joel Hillen, covering Colorado First. Looking around the nation tonight, at least 40 people were hurt in a California bus crash on Sunday. The accident happened on the 405 freeway in the North Hills area. 25 were taken to the hospital, five of them with serious injuries. It's unclear at this time what caused the crash. Many along the Florida Panhandle are still without electricity, cell phone service, and fuel. Jerika Duncan is in Panama City with more on life after the storm. Among the downed trees and massive power lines that Michael took out, are the stories of the people whose lives were turned upside down by the hurricane. As we toured the devastated neighborhoods of Panama City today, we found people in need of the most basic supplies. The National Guard handed out cases of water from a school parking lot. And for several hours, drivers waited in long lines for gas. When they finally got it, it's like Christmas. Front yards were turned into kitchens for cooking. These neighbors in the Glenwood section of the city are making the best of a bad situation. I'm still in shock about that, man. 43-year-old Daryl Garrett says he and his mother, who at times relies on an oxygen tank to breathe, rode out the storm in the hallway of their home, where fierce winds brought down a large oak tree on top of their roof. This is the tree that fell. Daryl's sister, Willie Mae Morgan, and her family of five are also now staying here because her house was ruined. I don't know, whenever we get on our feet, we may have to just relocate somewhere. Do you think this community will bounce back? Not really. <laughs> Not it does, really. It's going to take a long time. Many people here were struggling well before Michael made landfall. The median household income in Panama City is just over $38,000. 22% of residents live in poverty. When you already don't have anything and have to start from the bottom up, that's going to be hard. Willie Mae Morgan is an elementary school teacher. Her husband, Curtis, a construction worker. They say they're making it one day at a time, hoping more help comes quickly. Crews are still focused on restoring electricity and getting water to many of these homes. At least 12 locations in this area are now giving out free food and drinking water. But the problem is many people can't get there because they have no gas. And a lot of times, they have no money. Jerika Duncan, CBS News, Panama City, Florida. Still a tough sight to see, Jerika. Thank you. If you would like to help those in need who have been impacted by Hurricane Michael, one of the best ways is to contribute to the Red Cross relief efforts. We have a link to the Red Cross contribution site on our web channel, westernslopenow.com. So to come on KRX 5 News, after a long day at work, one man just wants to go home and someone inside his complex won't let him in. Find out what happened after that, which resulted in one person losing their job. America's Mattress is the only locally owned mattress store on the Western Slope. My husband and I were born and raised here. We're proud to call the Western Slope our home, and we don't think buying local should mean paying more. If you're looking for a great mattress at the best price, come see us. We'd love to earn your business. When I had hyperparathyroidism and I needed parathyroid surgery, I went to Dr. Craig Anderson at General Surgeons of Western Colorado. With over 20 years experience in using the latest minimally invasive techniques, Dr. Anderson's results are nationally competitive. Our team is dedicated to excellence in all areas of general surgery. Whether it's thyroid, parathyroid, abdominal, or breast surgery, the outcome of your operation is our number one priority. General Surgeons of Western Colorado. Expert care where you live. My husband and I own America's Mattress. We're the only locally owned mattress store on the Western Slope, and we have the lowest prices. Our definition of comfort has been redefined by our Serta Eye Comfort with an adjustable base. We love it, and we think you will too. Come see us. We'd love to earn your business. You're watching KREX 5 News. Cell phone footage captured a confrontation between two tenants where a woman stops a man from entering his downtown loft and demands proof he lives there. Reporter Vincent Blandin has more on what happened next. Please move, ma'am. 
I can. Okay. Do you live here? The Ariane Tolls was returning home from a late night at the office. But you're blocking me. Into my here. building. Okay. And okay. It's my building as well, so I need you to get out of my way. Okay. What okay. unit? I don't need to say that information. So excuse me, ma'am. I'm uncomfortable. Excuse me. Okay. You can be uncomfortable. That's that's your discretion. You're uncomfortable because you're you. A tenant who lives on the third floor of the Elder Shirt Lofts created a roadblock. I don't like the fact you have your phone in my face. Okay, I don't like the fact that you're blocking me for where I pay. All to I'm live asking at. is what unit. But you're not, I don't need to tell you that information, man. If you want to come into my building, it's not your building. You're not the owner. You pay rent. Sir, you walked up on a street. Yes, had yes, had and I've already buzzed in. Tolls shows a fob moves past the woman who News 4 will not name, takes an elevator to the fourth floor. The woman follows. Did this really just happen to me? And it did happen to me, so I was, I was really taken away at the moment. His cell phone video shows the woman staying on him after he uses his key to enter his downtown loft. No, have a good night, ma'am. Don't ever do that again. You look pretty stupid on video. Have a nice night. And my name is Mr. Tolls. That's where News 4 met the St. Louis business owner. I was kind of blown away, like shocked, wow. I'm just glad I had my camera out because if I didn't have my camera out, I, I feel, I feel, I feel that it could have went a totally different way. Millions have watched the video online. Uh, I appreciate all the love and support. And like I said, this, um, don't, don't respond negative. Don't go after the lady. Let her be at peace. Let her live her life. News 4 buzzed the woman's unit and also called numbers listed for her, but never got her response. I'm not even mad at her. I'm not upset with her. I'm not going to go after her legally or anything like that. I wish her the best. Still have a conversation with her, a, a presentable conversation with her. In St. Louis, Vincent Blanding, News 4. And according to News 4 St. Louis, the woman in that video has been fired from her job due to that incident. It's going to be cold tonight, and looking at our weather headlines, they're not up here right now, but I'll have them for you after the break. It's fall clearance here at American Fruits Warehouse. It makes now the perfect time to fall into savings this holiday season. Impress your guests with the new trendy living room collection only at American Furniture Warehouse. 